happens to the lawn? Yes. Yes, and, but, but that's exactly, except that there's another way to say that, which they get more what? They, yes, that's exactly what it was. They, they get more parallel. They start, they start moving this picture up, and these lines get more and more parallel. But what happens to parallel lines in projective space? They didn't meet in ordinary space, but in projective space, there's a line in effect. So what that says that is that I'm actually not going to get like this picture. <clears throat> I'm going to get something <clears throat> like that. Because the tangent lines become more and more parallel, but I know in projective space, parallel lines meet at infinity. So I wind up with this picture. Then I take that and I pull it off the, the edge. Somehow it's probably working with it. Yeah, I'm supposed to be here. I get this picture, and I pull it off the edge, and I wind up with a, a circle again. So in fact, not only is a hyperbola the same as a circle, but a parabola is the same as a circle. So, it, so that in, in projective space, all this geometry is the same thing. These geometrical figures are all the same thing. And it turns out in higher dimensions, you get similar results. And it turns out from certain mathematical viewpoints, Projective space is actually much better than ordinary space. It's a more natural place to do a lot of geometry. I think for that reason, they decided not to teach it in school. <laughs> you take, uh, you take uh, higher courses in algebraic topology, for example, they use projective spaces all over the place. Let me show you another odd thing about projective space. So this is actually a, a subject called homotopy theory, uh, of which you've had speakers that know a lot more about this than I do. But let's just take some set, which in a moment will be projective space. But I'm, I'm going to fix a point which I'll call x naught, and I'm going to look at loops that start and end at x naught. And it turns out you can multiply these things together. You, you can sort of make a, an arithmetic out of these loops. Technically, it's called a group, and technically, you have to do a bit more. But I make an arithmetic out of it. Just, I'll just wave my hands on this. For example, this is loop A, and this is loop B. Then I'm going to say that I'll multiply them by going around A and then around B. So I'll think of that as one loop. I go around A, then I go around B. Or if I want the inverse loop, I go around backwards. So now let's go to projective space. Well, remember in projective, there's projective two space. So we, we got to keep in mind that the stuff on here is the same as the stuff here. The point here is the same as the point here. So I draw that loop. Now, from that picture, you'd say, he's not drawing a loop. But what's the condition for a loop? The condition for a loop is I have to start and end at the same point. But that's what I did, because the points diametric opposite are the same point. So that's actually a loop. So let's call that loop A. But what is A times A? Let me make a star for times. That means I'm going to go through the loop A, and then I will repeat going through the loop A. Well, if I go twice, let me, let me draw it this way. I'll, I'll, I'll go along A, and then I'll go along A again. Now, here's a part of homotopy theory I didn't tell you about. But it turns out in homotopy theory, it's really more than loops. You think of two loops as being the same if you could move one into the other. If you could slide one loop into the other, then you regard them as being the same loop. That's something I didn't say before. But that's, uh, that's actually crucial. So that's why I don't really have to draw these two lines at the same place. I can certainly slide this into that. 
But now let me look at this in a slightly different way. Let me just 